Hey guys, what's up? I'm just from Movie Baseball Box here from the Cash Kelly and AC Sports Report. Tim, what's going on, man? Nothing. What's going on? No, I'm here to talk some Cardinals, and then we're gonna talk about maybe tonight or maybe tomorrow. We're gonna talk about the Dodgers and hopefully finish up this 30 clubs 30 recaps during the weekend. So let's talk about the Cardinals, Tim. They don't have Adam Wainwright in this ace. How big of how big of the difference record-wise will the Cardinals be this season? Um. Having, losing Wainwright is huge. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many games they'll lose because of him, but the, the one thing with them is they have a, you know, a little more of a better pitching staff than they came in with last year. Um, I think Kyle Loesch will improve for that rotation. I think uh, Jaime Garcia is in the second year, and uh, Chris Carpenter I think will have a good year. Jake Westbrook I think will have a good year, and he came over midseason and was really ineffective, so we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, so let's talk about their pitching rotation. Uh, starting off with the ace of this year, Chris Carpenter. Um, in 2009, him, uh, Chris Carpenter and Adam Wainwright were both in contention for the NL Cy Young. I mean, this team was just beast with Chris Carpenter and Adam Wainwright. The best duo in the NL right now. Um, well, not best duo in NL. They have no, the best. not best. Like, third best, maybe. Yeah, third best, maybe. Um... Last season, Chris Carpenter was 16-9, 235 innings pitch, and had a 3.22 ERA. Tim, do you think he's going to win 20 games this season? Carpenter? Yeah. Um, I think 20 is a lot at this point in his career. Um, you got to see if this guy can stay healthy. I think the biggest thing, uh, he, won, he won 16 games, but I mean, he's going to have to go back to being an ace this season. So I think somewhere around 16 or 17 is somewhere around that. Yeah, I mean Chris Carpenter. I I think he has the he still has the capability of being a twenty game winner. I think he can make squeeze twenty games, like twenty hole this season. That's just my prediction. Their number two starter, the NL Rookie of the Year, Jaime Garcia. This guy was just a straight up beast last season. Thirteen and eight with a two point seven zero ERA with one hundred and sixty three strikeouts. Tim, how well do you think he's gonna do this year? How many wins and losses do you think he's gonna average this year? That's a good question. I mean, a lot of guys have one good year, and then you don't know what you're going to get out of them the next year. I think the ERA will probably come up a bit as hitters figure him out a little bit. But I can still see this guy. I, I still think he'll improve wins. I could see something like a 15-7 and seven record, about a 3.10 ERA, something like that. I mean, he's a very good pitcher. He showed that last year. I'm going on the assumption that he's not just a one-year wonder. Maybe he could, maybe he would. I mean, I like I, mean, I like watching Jaime Garcia. I mean, he was pretty decent. Well, really great, I should say. Made a mistake right there. But seeing him on MLB Network, he said he's ready to go for this season. And I hope he can win maybe 15 games this season. Um, their number three projected starter is supposed to be Jake Westbrook. This guy had a split season with Cleveland and St. Louis last season. Like, Tim uh, did a touch-up on the rotation. He was 10-11 and 11 last season with the split season. A 4.22 ERA and 202 innings pitch. I mean, he wasn't really inconsistent with St. Louis last season, having the split season. Tim, do you think he's going to break out this season? Um, He's older, so I, mean, I think breakout's probably the wrong word. But I think looking at him, he should improve on... That's why I meant. He should improve this season. Um, I think he's a much better pitcher than he was last year. Don't expect too much out of him and hope you get more has really got to be the type of thing you have with them. I could see something like a 14 and 11 record with a 3.6 something ERA. I think that would be a pretty nice season for him. I guess because I don't really know much yeah, about Obviously being an NL entire season should help him out. Yeah, I mean, he's been he's transferring over from the AL to the NL. Um, his first full season in the NL, so Let's just see how well he can do this season. I mean, I know a little bit about him. I know some, but I don't know much on him. So um, let's just touch base with them during our little season review, maybe at the end of the season. The number four starter, we got Kyle Loesch. Um, really inconsistent pitcher uh, for the past two years with the squad. The past two years, he was 6-10. and 10, And then the last season, he was 4-8 and eight with an ERA way really, really high. Tim, do you think he's going to have a, some more trouble like he did last two seasons? You know, I think the biggest thing for him has always been staying 
healthy. Um, he's got great stuff. And we'll have to see what he can do. I, I think he, when he's healthy, and he's going to have to be healthy this season, he can be a pretty effective number three starter. The number three starter? Yeah. I don't know about the number three star. I think number four fits him pretty well. Like, as of right now, yeah. Their number five starter, we got Kyle McLennan. He's coming over from the bullpen. He was a setup role last season for uh, their closer. I don't know if his name, I think it's Ryan Franklin. Um, I just lost Ryan Franklin's name right there. It was on the tip of my tongue, guys. Um, but he's going to be transferring over from the reliever role to the starting rotation. In the past three seasons, this guy was just... Record-wise, was not really inconsistent. He was two and seven in 08, four and four, which was pretty decent in 09, and in 2010 he was one and four. Do you think he's gonna have a breakout? Like it's not somewhat of a breakout season at the number five start. Do you think he can win like ten games? Yeah, I can see him win ten games. I mean, last time he's a star, I think he's with the Phillies uh, like five years ago. So it's a transition. I wouldn't. I, I'd be surprised if he's in that rotation the entire season. Because I think the Cardinals will go out and get some guys. Um, I could see him winning 10 games. I could also see him going the other way, though. So we're going to have to see. Yeah, because I really have to see. I really have to concentrate on Kyle McClendon this season. Because I think the Cardinals are going to be somewhat of a watch team without Wainwright this season. So I just got to see how well they do without Wainwright. Now going on to their key acquirements. And Tim, why are you typing so fast? My bad. And oh. Uh, Sorry to get off topic, but let's talk about their key acquirements real quick. We got Lance Berkman. This guy was a big acquirement this season. Tim, he had a split season with Houston and New York. New York didn't want to resign him because he didn't really do crap with the Yankees. Um, do you think he's going to do something with the Cardinals this season? Um, Hitting-wise, I still think he has some left. I think the problem is he's in right field. Um, he's not going to last the entire season playing the outfield. And you can't just say, we'll put him at first base because Pujols is there and he's not moving unless they decide they really change and trade him. Um, Hitting-wise, I think moving back into the NL Central should help him. He's not what he used to be, but I could see a 20-home run season. Fielding-wise, I think him in right field is going to get messed up. Yeah, I mean, he's so used to playing, like, what, third base and first base when he was at Houston, and he was playing DH role with the, uh, the New York Yankees. I think outfield's gonna really gonna have somewhat of an effect on his season. So I actually was talking to one of my friends who was a Cardinals fan, and we actually kind of summed it up that he's gonna have maybe a 20 home run season. Um, on to the next equipment, Brian Tallett. Um, in this photo, he looks very very old, but he's kind of somewhat young. Um, Tim, I don't know much about Brian Tallett. What do you have on Brian Tallett that's gonna bring something to this club? Um. He was two and six last year with the six forty ERA and seventy innings. That's pretty lousy. Um, but you gotta throw those numbers out. I, I don't know much about him either, but I know he's a much better pitcher than he was last season. I don't know much about him, so I can't really say what's what to expect from him because I don't really watch the Blue Gate, the Blue Jays game. I said the Blue Gays on accident. <laughs> so um, I apologize to all the uh, Blue Jays fans out there. Um, I don't know much about the Cardinals, so the Cardinals, Brian Tallett, just, I'm just losing a loss of words right now, right there, guys. Um, so Brian Tallett, we just have to wait for, for him to see what he can do this season. Their, main, their next acquirement was Ryan Terrio. He had a split season with the Cubs and the Dodgers last season. Um, pretty much is going to be a backup role. Do you think, Tim, he's going to start at shortstop this season, or is he going to be a backup role? For who? Brian Tallett or Ryan Terrio, I mean? Yeah. Uh, I think I'll start at shortstop this year. I believe that's what they brought him in, and I'm not really sure who else they could start at shortstop. Uh, there's probably something I'm missing. Um, th this guy's actually a pretty underrated player, though. I think he ended the season with the Dodgers last year. Yeah, ended the season with the Dodgers last year. I mean, he doesn't blow you away with power. He can hit for a decent average, though, and he's a pretty good fielder. Um, it's probably better off that he would have been a second baseman, but, you know, he's not. Yeah, I mean, I think the Cardinals with these acquirements, I mean, they're going to, I think I have them finishing off in third place this season. Tim, where do you have them uh, finishing off? Well, I mean, I made my baseball preview prior to Wainwright getting injured. Uh, th there's a lot of questions, which is why this is the most interesting division for me. I had him, I had the Cardinals in first place. 
Wainwright. Um, losing Wainwright, I would probably change that now, but I'm, I'm going to stick with first place because I think this team can add some at the deadline. Um, that being said, it could go in the real wrong direction. Uh, the pitching could be a mess. Wainwright could get hurt. Or Wainwright is hurt. Carpenter could get hurt. And also, they could lose boots. Or, uh, and uh, Pujols, th- that thing could get ugly and they might have to trade him. So, I think the biggest thing for me is this is one of those teams that's they could be really good, they could be really bad, they could be in between. It, it's tough season. Yeah, I mean, they have... I think they're going to get somebody at the deadline, too. I mean, I had them at first place before Aiden Wright took a dump. And I just think that this team's going to finish. It, it's going to come to the last week of the season. So I just have to wait until the last two two or three weeks of the season to actually figure out who's going to be number one or number two of the season. Their key departures last season got Pedro Feliz uh, coming over from the Philadelphia Phillies, Tim, to the Cardinals. Um, Blake Hawksworth was traded for Ryan Terrio. Aaron Miles didn't really do nothing for the squad except being a bench role. Dennis Reyes is off to your Phillies. Brendan Ryan coming over well, was traded to... No, actually, Dennis, actually, Dennis Reyes ended up with the Red Sox. The thing with the Phillies fell through. Yeah. And Brendan Ryan was traded off, so he was at shortstop, so Ryan Terrio is taking his position. Jeff Supon did not really pull through with the Cardinals last season. He's off with the Giants. And then Randy Wynn, who's off playing with the Baltimore Orioles, I think the squad's going to have, have a decent season. Not the best without Adam Wainwright, so I have him finishing either in second or maybe third place this season. So, I can't see anywhere from first to third. Uh, it's a tough call. Yeah, just like me, I actually have him in first place. Like I, I'm recapping real quick. I had him in first place. Now it's kind of a question, second or third. They're not going to finish in first place because the Brewers are going to be the best team right now in this division. Uh, Sean Markham... Zach Granke got Prince Fielder on his contract year. I think this the they're just gonna have a come out and just have a great season with the Brewers. So pretty much people are saying they're gonna be in first place, and I have to agree with that. But we'll touch base with the Brewers. That's coming up to, uh, maybe this weekend. So I'm Justin. That's Tim from the Cash Kelly and AC Sports Report. I'll talk to you guys soon. You guys have a great week and a great weekend. Um, well, I'll talk to you guys later.